<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Uh, welcome to another throwback video here, but this isn't part of an Elvira movie macabre presentation or that Hammer Horror box set. And I'll actually go ahead and link to both of those series of videos at the end of this one, so stick around for that. This one instead is for standalone I'd been wanting to revisit pretty much since I was a little kid, which is for the 1972 TV film Gargoyles. This TV movie is one of the oldest memories that I have regarding film is I have some dim memories about the story or especially about the ending, you know, having some of that be explained to me. But as for what this uh, film is about, so TV movie, the synopsis is as follows. An anthropologist paleontologist and his daughter while traveling through the southwestern U.S. stumble upon a colony of living, breathing gargoyles. Now, all I can remember from this film was a little bit about um, some of the end and what the gargoyles looked like. Something which, of course, when I was a kid was um, a little bit scary. Um, but, you know, I had some of the uh, aspects of the story kind of explained to me towards the end since I was so young. But at any rate, this father and his daughter are traveling. The father is doing some research um, as he has written books about demons and the occult and how a lot of that relates in anthropology. Uh, they visit a man who has something interesting to show them, um, looking kind of like a gimmicky roadside attraction. They initially kind of dismiss him when they see how everything is set up. And they even dismiss him after they see what he has, which is a very large skeleton with wings and a large beak. They're thinking it's a hoax, something that he just kind of threw together and really just laugh it off. Even though he insists he found it and it was all intact and he had to drag it back there. But... Anyways, while they're speaking, night is coming and the old man just insists that they kind of need to lock down for the night, that things are pretty dangerous outside. But then the whole shack is shaking. From somebody, some outside force, it's shaking, causing a fire, causing some rafters to fall and kill the old man. And our lead and his daughter have to escape to a nearby motel. They were even being chased by something along the way that was on top of their car. So this mystery is afoot, you know, and, um, you know, more is uncovered about this attack. The police are now getting involved to find out what happened to this place. And there's this appearance of these gargoyle creatures. Um, but rather than like a full out attack from here and out from these creatures, they seem to just be more interested in these bones, you know, getting them back. And eventually more is kind of uncovered and discovered about them uh, because the gargoyles kidnap the daughter and give us a lot of exposition about what they are, what they're doing there, why they're coming out of this cave now and their history when it comes to trying to coexist in the same world as humans over the millennia. So all in all, this is definitely a B movie. Um, it's a B TV movie. So maybe that's a B minus movie. I don't know. But obviously it's coming from the same inspiration that we've seen with B movies of like the 50s and 60s, you know, kind of cheesy here and there. But this one does have a little bit more production value. You know, we got better costumes, better makeup effects. It's filmed in color. Decent performances for the most part because the material itself, especially the dialogue from a gargoyle who can speak, really harken back to what came several years before with some of those B-movies of the 50s and 60s. The end of your age. The beginning of mine. <laughs> Very on the nose, you know, the whole we will be dominant, ha 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 kind of ridiculousness. But... It's dated, BTV movie, very short, but still interesting. Something I actually wanted to see where it was going, and I was never bored while watching it. Or feeling too, like, disconnected due to how dated it is, and the format and style of this production. Now, when it does come to those performances, the only actor who I actually recognized while watching it was Scott Glenn. As uh, he plays one of these uh, motorcycle punks who were kind of inspecting the damage from the fire and being accused from the police of having caused it. A crime which a daughter is even vouching for them, you know, having not been involved and is trying to get them off the hook. And uh, some of these other motorcycles along, uh, cyclists along with uh, Scott Glenn um, even help kind of in this uh, search party to try to rescue her, you know, after she was kidnapped. And I actually saw him show up again later that same exact night when I was revisiting the 1990 film The Hunt for Red October, which I hadn't seen in years. Um, and uh, though I didn't recognize him at the time, another actor who I was familiar with was the head gargoyle who was played by Bernie Casey, um, who passed away a few years back but has quite the extensive career. You've no doubt seen him in something, whether it's, you know, Bill and Ted or Revenge of the Nerds or any number of things from the 80s and all throughout his career. Very extensive. Anyways. 
Now, when it comes to like my flashback of like my younger self, I think I was between maybe three to five years old um, when this was explained, when this kind of explained to me about the end, um, which, you know, I got to see again in this, of course, was that the gargoyles are guarding their eggs, take a long time to hatch. So while they may look mean and scary to a little kid, there is a side to them that they're really just trying to survive. Um, I think having that pointed out when I was a little kid kind of stuck with me somehow when it comes to monsters in movies, trying to see what that point of view is, why they're in the story, what their needs are and everything. Because I remembered that minor part for decades and I'd been wanting to revisit this one for years. And surprisingly, despite the, uh, you know, being a bit dated and corny, of course, it still has a lot of charm, it's still interesting, and it's still more than worth checking out. And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out my latest video here for the TV movie Gargoyles from 1972, which at the time of this video is available on Tubi, Fubo, Crackle, and Amazon Prime, as well as some paid rental services. So if this uh, retro 70s film sounds interesting, head on over to check it out. Anyways, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for coming by and for sticking around to the end. I got some links coming up in just a moment. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're new, thanks for helping me get close to that 600 subscriber mark. I keep kind of hitting it and then dropping back. So I'm almost there. But anyways, thank you for coming by and I will see you in the next one.